and welcome to my submission for a travel stipend to present my research to the ICUR in 2015 in Warwick. My name is Julie Seetzes and I'm a second year art student majoring in history and film studies. The paper I wish to present to the conference is entitled Laura Charetta's Humanist Education. How effectively could women practice humanism in Quattro Centro, Italy? The study of history, as well as allowing us to understand the past, also enables an understanding of the present. As the Renaissance was the gateway to modernity, educational, societal and family structures established during that time for the form the basis of many we see today. With regards to education, by looking at how individual women such as Laura Toretta were able to negotiate their education and participation in the humanist movement, we may be able to answer questions of today and how universal education is not the whole answer to full participation in society. I would assume that all those undergraduates who are presenting in ICUR are interested in personal fulfilment and the pursuit of their profession to, to achieve personal career or perhaps wider societal goals. Renaissance women were only able to participate in education in humanism in a very narrow set of circumstances. Fathers invested in their daughter's education as a means to promote the wealth and prestige of their families. But the education was never expected to mean full engagement with the humanist movement. Laura Charetta's continued education past her marriage was due to an unusual set of circumstances. Yet her frustrations with the limits imposed on her were given full reign in her writing. Studying the societal limits to full participation in education's advantages by women in the Renaissance can go some way in explaining the modern phenomena where women are well represented in tertiary education but are still underrepresented in board positions, as CEOs and in politics. Gender roles and societal expectations threaten women's personal agency in Renaissance Italy where they had to choose between full social acceptance or a full humanist education. In the 21st century post-feminist West, women are still cast in roles that make it difficult to fully realise their intellectual potential. Study of the past may allow us to rethink how these roles are serving the best interests of society and how we can break down barriers to women's career development. I believe that our policy makers and decision makers in government are overwhelmingly economists, political strategists and lawyers. What we need more of is creative thinkers with firm understanding of how our society was formed so that they are able to make decisions on how we want our culture to develop. By cross-fertilising disciplines with other areas of research, we run the risk of breaking down intellectual silos that develop where specialisations require very focused work. I'm excited to be involved in enthusing my fellow undergraduates with my passion for the past and instilling into them a recognition of its importance and relevance to the current world so they are able to be well equipped to mould the future.